Hello, SmartBear community! I'm welcoming you in the 7 Common API Testing Mistakes with Robert Schneider. Hi, Robert. How are you today? I'm great. Hey, everybody. Um, we have already discussed six uh, mistakes, uh, so we have already talked about uh, the uh, ways of no need to use hard-coded data uh, in tests. Uh, after that, we were talking about the bad thing when we isolate our software quality assurance team from end users. And today uh, we're going to talk about executing tests. And what is the issue here? Well, the issue here is another really common one where people will run their tests manually. They will bring up whatever testing tool they might be using. It could be Ready API and SOAP UI. It could be something else. And they'll sit there at their desk and they will launch a test. They will look at the results to say, okay, this looks like it's good. Let's launch the next test and so on. They'll maybe do this for four or five tests. And if you've been watching this long-running series, what you've probably noticed is that a lot of these problems tie into each other. In other words, you can get away with running your tests manually if you only have five tests with hard-coded data. But as we've seen, there are some real drawbacks to using hard-coded data and only covering a small part of your API. So by definition, if you get to a place where you are feeding your API test with proper amounts of realistic data and lots of it and running lots of different scenarios, it becomes almost impossible to properly test it using purely manual procedures. Now, clearly, when you start your testing efforts and you're building your tests, you have to run them manually to see how they all work and if they're logical and working in the way that you think they will. But once you get past that, and you start thinking about running them in a typical build environment, you really want to be thinking about automation. Okay, so, and uh, what can be, uh, what issues uh, can we face here? Sure. If you, don't, and if you don't use automation, first of all, you're not going to be part of the actual build cycle, which is where you want to be. If you're doing proper API testing, most organizations these days have moved, in many cases, from waterfall API development or software development to more of the agile approach. And not everybody is pure agile and there's variations in gray areas here. But in general, most organizations are doing builds much more frequently than they used to in the past. So you as a tester or a developer who's building tests, you don't have the luxury anymore of saying, well, we're going to be doing a build. This month's build, I'll run my tests. It's more like this minute's build or this hour's build. So you have to use automation is really the issue because if you don't, you're not truly part of the regression testing cycle. You're not part of any new functionality testing. And you, you frankly, are a bottleneck in the overall testing mm -hmm. and software development uh, workflow. So you want to don't want to be that bottleneck. The good news is that with modern API tools, API testing tools, and again, I keep referring to SmartBear's really excellent products, what you can do is these are very nicely integrated with popular build environments like a Jenkins, even if you want to go back to Maven or even Ant or even Make, mm -hmm. these things can all launch these API tests that you have built in the tools of your, the tool of your choice. So you can, what we call, this is called shift left, where you're taking the, the testing cycle and you're pulling it back closer to the development cycle. So what should hopefully as we wrap up this series come across is if you follow some of the best practices we've been kind of talking about here over the past few weeks, what you'll see is that they make you more able to handle automation because things are not hard-coded. They're not a handful of tests that are, that are very fixed. They're a lot more dynamic, yet at the same time, they're a lot more able to be pulled into an automated build environment. And as we just did in the most recent discussion, if you're using, for example, uh, history tools or reporting to look at your results over time, all of this can be tied in very nicely with automation, including potentially the AI-driven reports or just even human-viewed reports to say, well, we're running a build every two hours and we see a trend that's going in the right direction or, oh, we see a trend that's going in the wrong direction. Let's alert the developers that some, there seems to be a slowdown in our API. We're getting a lot more bugs. Stop everything. Go figure out what's going wrong. Automation makes that possible. Otherwise, you're doing it by, by hand. You're not going to get that level of sophistication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. The earlier you will find the issue, the easier it will be to fix it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all these things tie together and we kind of culminate 
we, we get to the, the pinnacle of all this by using automation. And when I talk about automation, I mean it in two dimensions. The first level of automation is data-driven testing, where you're not using five fixed test scenarios. You're using thousands of test scenarios that are maybe encapsulated in five or ten test cases with different data feeding into them. That's automation dimension one. Automation dimension two is mm -hmm. instead of you launching the test on your machine and looking at the results, you have this tied into the build cycle so that when maybe people kick off a Jenkins build, it goes all the way to your API test and the results go all the way back to some kind of centralized repository with automated reports that bring up the results and tell you if you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. It totally makes sense. Okay, thanks a lot. That was very interesting uh, and that was very great uh, seven mistakes uh, that we will need to try to avoid. Uh, community, if you are interested in watching uh, other mistakes that we have already discussed with Robert, you can find all the videos in the current playlist. Uh, so just watch the videos and leave us your comments, uh, what you think about the mistakes and how you uh, avoid, uh, you, how you are trying to avoid doing this. All right. Thank you, Robert, for this series. That was very useful. I, supp I, I think um, I, I suppose we will invite you to our Smart Bear Talks uh, one more time. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Looking forward to it. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye.